Don't throw that word around in these waters. <laughs> well, that one. Oh, wow, I think I just caught that. Are there little pirates jumping around everywhere? No. It's so different. <laughs> it's so different, right? Film that small piece of fluff. It's amazing, it's Trinidad fluff. We're expecting you. Come on in. And we're on our merry way again. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. I'm Kiara, and this is Adam. A few years ago, we walked away from our life on land to pursue travel and adventure aboard our floating home, the Millennial Falcon. Last year saw us improving ourselves and the boat whilst we tackled our first Atlantic circuit. Join us as we come full circle back to the Caribbean where we'll commence preparations for our next big challenge. Oh shoot, I do not snore. Adam, the dog whisperer. <laughs> nice quiet morning walk. How does this happen? <laughs> this is 140 miles all the way down to Trinidad. Okay, we're tracking the Grenadines at the moment. We're on our way down to the windward side of Grenada and then we're going to turn south for Trinidad. Tonight's entertainment includes dodging oil rigs and praying that we don't get a visit from pirates. <laughs> Well, first shift of the night has started and Adam has been downstairs trying to sleep for about half an hour. I've just had some dinner, um, some nice leftover pizza. Luckily the moon's come up now, which is really nice. It's like, uh, Adam said, I think it's 92% waning moon or something. So almost a full moon, which is amazing. Um, and before then it was like cloudless night. So the moon's up, kind of lighting everything up. And I can see lights on the horizon, which means that this thing that I thought was like, oh, maybe it's just one of the oil towers, like maybe the oil rig had its own AIS. No, I actually genuinely think it's a 1,194 foot um, cargo ship. That's just insane. We're 42 foot. But like this is more than 300 meters and we're a 13 meter boat. This thing is huge. So I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for it. And annoyingly, on the screen, it says that on our AIS, you can tell how close um, the two of you will meet. I think it's called a CPA, and I'm sure somebody will correct me, but I think it's like closest point of attack. And it's like going from, oh, 200 feet to half a mile, which is a little too close for comfort for my liking for a 300 meter, uh, for a 300 meter, I've just woken Adam up. Adam's pretty like, why is she chattering away to herself? How far off is it? The CPA is like going from 200 feet to like, like no, he's changing course. really, really close. Oh, is he? It's doing 12 miles. CPA is a mile, just under a mile, 30 minutes. Oh, that's good. So it's gone now from... He's shifting his course to starboard. Oh, cool. That's good. Because before it was like a couple of feet and then half a mile and then a couple of feet. And I was like, oh, this is really, really close. Anyway, I was just astounded at how big it was, but obviously I've woken Adam up with my chattering, so Adam was trying to have a I was on my way to the bathroom and I heard you say 300 meter shift and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, <hello>. right? <laughs> and I was like, I'm just, I'm just steering out there, no matter what rights we might have, I'm staying a hell out of the way of that. And what does CMA stand for, CPA stand for again? Closest point of approach. Approach, I say closest point of attack. <laughs> Don't throw that word around in these waters. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, the sun's just starting to rise now, and uh, we're about 10 miles away from Trinidad. There's a pass that we want to go through. But it's so weird, the, the waves have just, like, all just kind of gone off on each other and uh, like a, a weird like rushing noise kind of came in and suddenly we're only doing about two knots or we were doing about five so the like I think that they are well known here for 
currents and tides that are just insane, like sometimes up to four knots. I think what we've just hit is one of them. Might very well mean, I mean, we're still doing for well, whopping 1.8 to two knots. We might need to start motoring in now because uh, I just don't know if we'll get anywhere with this. Last night actually wasn't too bad after all. Um, Adam, to be fair, copped most of the of like all the ship traffic and stuff. I just saw like I just saw that massive container ship and then saw one of the oil rigs and I went downstairs for my break. Meanwhile Adam's up here facing some uh, rains and, and like more ships. Like he faced so many ships one of them pulled him up. So I definitely had the easier watch last night. Which was good. But yeah Adam's down now but I might need to confer with him on uh and what to do now when we're only going 1.7 knots? The all line top sails are out. Yeah. Just a bit. Now we need to ratchet the actual sails a bit. So, there you have it. I won't say we've made it yet because worse things have happened in less stress smaller stretches of water. <laughs> And we do have 12 miles to go, but uh, yeah, I never really came full circle on my little little piracy rant earlier. I, I couldn't have jinxed myself more. We obviously got away with it scot-free. There was no issue, and I'm not saying there ever was. But a few interesting scares. We had I had three commercial ships converging on our position. One was dead in the water, and he called me up and said, "What are you doing?" And I said, oh, "I'm trying to go behind you," and he's cutting me off, and they're gonna stay out of his way. Anyway. We all just sort of said, yeah, don't, please don't run into each, each other and, and stay out of the way. That was probably the most tedious thing, but the most, not frightening, but the most concern that I was given was this fishing boat. Just after my watch, so I left, I came up and Kiara went down and it was an AIS target on the screen and it was going away and it was nothing to worry about at all. And then I looked back to follow up on it and it had turned around and it was coming back towards us on a convergent course. And it was like a small fishing boat. I was like, oh, don't like this. Don't like this at all. It's literally done a complete 180 degrees and it's making a beeline for us. So he called me up. We needed a judge's ruling. I figure if we're going to be yep. boarded and attacked, you might as well be in the loop. Exactly. <laughs> so I immediately got changed out of my pajamas in case any pirates wanted to come board our ship. They came back towards us, made a beeline for us, and then it's almost like they didn't know we were here because they eventually go, oh, we're gonna we're gonna like, run into them. So then they just changed later? course and ran south again. Yeah. Or north rather. I think we were both on edge because of these piracy warnings. There was an article on Noonsight, and uh, he was saying like, look, do you, like you guys do realize that these oil rigs are providing an immense amount of money into Trinidad. Like it's probably the main income of Trinidad is the oil. Do you really think that they're gonna let some pirates just run around the outside and like get in the way of everyone? All these little pirates hanging around. Of course they're not. There are going to be people and like watching is going to be a coast guard there. I think for well, that guy who was um, who was just kind of hanging out, that's what he might have been doing. Yeah, there was yeah one of the three boats was yeah. a smaller boat that was just kind of around. It was like a pilot boat for the commercial traffic. But I yeah. mean, if anything goes down, who do you think we were going to run to? We were going to run straight over to the nearest exactly. commercial ship yeah. and or rig and be like help. Yeah. As Adam said before, like, it's not to say there has been some things in the past, but I think it seems pretty, pretty okay now. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, I, I definitely blew take... it up a bit in my head. I might have caught that one. Oh, wow, I think I just caught that. Oh, it's here it is. Who is he prancing around for? This is not the wagon. I'm just going to run out of... Uh, of battery on this camera purely because I'm oh I missed it again purely because I'm just filming waves and hoping that a dolphin will pop up on them <laughs>
quite strange. The water here is like green. I would not have expected like a different color water just 140 miles south of like beautiful Tobago Keys. It's, it's quite strange. It must be like uh, river water or something like that. All right, almost coming in. It's funny because we can see the uh, now that the fog or the mist has cleared a little bit, we can see uh, Venezuela over there. Like Venezuela is really, really close. I can see the cliffs. I can see everything. Are there little pirates jumping around everywhere? No, <laughs> looks pretty good to me. Yeah, but it's just right there. You know, like you can see it. And you just think, surely it can't be that different. Surely not. But anyway, it's weird. We've uh, we've kind of arrived here, and we're just like. Do you think it looks a little more South American now? I mean, maybe it does. It's like, mm, we're kind of only like, we're still only 120 well, miles away miles from, from Grenada. Exactly. It's so different. It's so different, right? Just the water is different, I'll give you that. The water is like yeah. proper brown, like brack, yeah. it's not brackish, but it's like, it looks brackish. And actually when you see the currents that come through, like that go past Trinidad, they're just insane. They come from, um, from the north side of Brazil and both Adam and I were like, oh no, this is going to be a nightmare if we ever have to go against it. Like two, like on a, on a good day, it's two knots against you. Um, Straight is, out of the Amazon that River, that. Up, up the Brazilian coast, yeah. and it hooks around into the Caribbean yeah. Sea here and it screams around this corner. Yeah, I actually said that to the camera before. It kind of looks like river water and then I was like, I sound like such a numpty because like the ocean is right there. Of course it's not river water. And now I'm like, yeah, it was river water. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> Stupid. Spot the excited person on board. Mildly excited, mildly. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, kind of going into a bit of a tidal shift just up ahead and the water is just like, it's almost like a whirlpool. It's actually coming up on it. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> um, but we'll be fine. But it was very similar to out there where it was a little deeper, but here as well, it's happening again. It's just weird. I'll, actually, I'll go back to the cockpit and see what um, kind of speeds that we're doing when we go through it. It's a little... It's like a monster coming to get us. I know, it's like we're going into a big whirlpool. I just, I very, did, I just said that too. Very unsettling. What speed are we doing now? Uh, we've How actually drop? gained a little bit of pace, but we're getting pushed around by it. Yeah, it's helping us along. Ah, cool, this is good. It's supposed to be coming in, so. It makes me laugh. I hear all these people out there going, uh, yeah, haven't you ever seen a tide before? It's like, uh, no, because we've been in the Caribbean the whole time. <laughs> now, actually, Adam has when he was in UK a lot. And I grew up in UK, obviously I've seen a tide, but we haven't often sailed in like very tidal waters. So this is somewhat new to us. I think I might put that headsail in. It's not really yeah, doing much. Everyone that I insisted on you filming a rock. <laughs> I'm so amazed. Film that rock, Adam. Film, Film that small fluff. piece of fluff. It's amazing. It's Trinidad fluff. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Trinidad fluff. Yeah. Oh wow. How's the caves on that side? Oh my god, Adam. Film the caves. <laughs> that is a whole new register of green. It's a rare time since both Adam and I were filming the same thing at the same time because we're so astounded. Well, first impressions of Trinidad. 
Not too bad. Different to the different. rest. Different to what I've like seen it. of the Caribbean thus far. The closer to town we get, the less we're going to like it. Yeah, I dare <laughs> say. I've, I have heard that this is a bit of an industrial kind of place, but I think that uh, this place is it's a hell of a lot bigger than all the other islands of the Caribbean. about the Coast Guards. Apparently it's a routine check when everyone comes in apparently they do this but it's a bit strange we're just kind of like in the middle of a channel just floating around and boats are going by us and they're just like yeah can we see your passports? Who's your agent? And we're like ah oh, I have a feeling it's 8 30 in the morning so they're trying to call somebody probably who's not work. Apparently we haven't done anything wrong, but it certainly feels like it. <laughs> I sent a message, uh, sorry, I sent an email to him on 12th, uh, and I said we're leaving tomorrow from some bits from the Grenadines. So there's been a bit of confusion. Coast Guard followed up. They said, yeah, no worries, on your way. And they came racing back up and said, oh, actually, uh, there's been a okay. change of plans or a recent development. I need you to go back out, get in touch with your agent and let them know that you're here and then you can come in. So it's I don't know why, I don't know what's going on. But Kiara's on the phone to the yard now, trying to smooth it over. I don't understand why the need for the stall tactic or the delay, but we'll play the game. It's a nice, calm day. It's a pleasant piece of water to be driving laps of and everyone's been really polite so far, so just have to do as you're told until it's all over, really. Plus, it's a, it's a number, so it's plus five nine zero. Silly sausages! Before you arrive here, you have to submit a float plan. Uh, as mentioned before, the reasons why submitting the float plan, but um, you can't do it until you've actually cleared out of the country. So, like, you always have to do it the night before, the day of, an hour before leaving, or whatever. Um, you send you like copies of your passport and your um, and your boat documents. So it's fine. I sent all that across and said, you know, this is my ETA, blah blah blah. blah. What they had to do on their end was then forward that across to the Coast Guard, to which the Coast Guard would have then said, "We're expecting you. Come on in." Which is why they spent so long trying to call people and were going, "Well, can we see your passports and what's going on?" Because they weren't expecting us. So. They forwarded, they forwarded everything across to the Coast Guards now and uh, we are allowed in. Let's see what happens when we pass the Coast Guard station. Yeah, true, I, I reckon. Yeah, what are you yeah. doing? I told you to go away. Yeah, the Coast Guards are probably going to be like, like, check your email. And they'll be like, I've got nothing. And it'll be Digicel's fault. <sighs> Can you tell who's a worrywart? I think it's a bit of a worrywart. All good. We'll wait for these guys to pass ads and then we'll head. Okay, yeah, let them go. Hmm. Okay. All is well. And we're on our merry way again. <laughs> what a beautiful place this is now. <laughs> it's a nice reception. Six blokes with machine guns, assault rifles rather. No, they were very friendly. Well, we've made it to Trinidad. So I guess now's a pretty good time to actually tell you like why we're here. Um, because for the past few months, since about August, when we've been in St. Martin, we've been saying, we have to get south, we have to get south. And for a start, that completely made sense. We were in like smack bang in the centre of where most hurricanes are in the middle of hurricane season. And so from St Martin we headed down to Guadeloupe and that was definitely further south and I'm sure a lot of you were like cool keep on going south which is exactly what we did, carrying on going further south. So we got to Martinique. Martinique isn't too bad in terms of like a hurricane hole, um, it occasionally gets hit but definitely not as badly as further north but we kept on going south and we went all the way down to Bekwe. If any of you who know the Leeward Islands, you probably were thinking, okay, that's enough far south, you're out of the hurricane zone. But as you've just seen, we went, carried on going further south. So we're all the way down now in Trinidad. And I'm sure some of you are thinking now, why did you go so far south? Well, so I'm almost kind of cringing inside to say this because I hear, I can hear all the gasps right now but we're down here because we're gonna haul our boat out <laughs> it's not because there is anything wrong with the boat 
and it's not because we need to do any work. Just want to clarify that. It's actually for storing the boat. So you obviously all know by now that our plans to head further up north early this year kind of fell through when we were a bit late to the game. Our refit took a lot longer than what we thought it was going to take and so we ended up coming south and kind of reassessing our plans a little bit. But what we did always plan to do was to go home for Christmas. Our family is in Australia and so we have to put the boat somewhere while we go back there. It's so far away and we have not been back now for three years because of COVID that we do want to spend a bit of time back there. So to store the boat in a marina where the hull's kind of getting dirty and it's somewhat similar price, we were like, you know what, I think it might just be better off to haul out. In addition to going back to Australia, and the reason why we really are going to haul out, because it will be for a couple of month periods, is because we are going to soon in almost about a week now, um, are going to fly to America and go and deliver a boat. Uh, it's pretty cool as crew aboard an Oyster 52. But our haul out is in um, a couple of days, so pretty much we made it here on Thursday and our haul out was on Monday, which is why we were racing so much to get further south. Um, and tip for new players, trying to get south during hurricane season or trying to get anywhere during hurricane season is an absolute nightmare. Um, don't count on it. <laughs> That's pretty much our plan. The delivery is from uh, Annapolis area down to BVI, so pretty cool like couple of weeks sailing there that we'll have and a bit of a chill out in BVI's before we head back home to Australia. That's kind of what our next few months looks like.